And so, without further ado, let's introduce our first speakers, ZX Zhang. ZX leads Crypto Econ Lab at Protocol Labs, where he studies the intersection of networks, incentives, and optimization. He'll be giving us an introduction to Filecoin, crypto economics, and its opportunities and challenges. Welcome, ZX. Thank you, Carola. And um, well, it's, uh, my name is ZX, and I lead Crypto Econ Lab at Protocol Lab. I'm super, super excited to be here. Um, thank you for all the organizers for putting together this amazing event, and thank you for all the speakers and you uh, for coming to our event. Um, the goal of today really is to like kind of showcase, um, of my talk is to showcase the scope and this range of topics covered by Falcon Crypto Econ and its amazing opportunities and challenges. Here's our uh, rough agenda. So uh, we start with what is Falcon to bring everybody on the same onto the same page, and then we talk through some on a high level some of the crypto econ challenges that we face uh, when, uh, when, uh, when designing and um, governing the network, right? Then we talk about um, some of these uh, latest exciting opportunities and many of these could be um, either startup opportunities or like just interesting research, uh, uh, research ventures. And then lastly, we just covered uh, the agenda of a crypto econ day today. Um, just before we get started, uh, we are hiring a crypto econ lab. We, our goal, our aspiration is to be this hub that, come, that goes from research to protocol and then protocol to product, right? We start, we work with uh, university and research groups on all the general incentive research topics that is central to Web3 and crypto econ. And the other really interesting, uh, exciting aspect working in crypto econ in the protocol lab network is uh, with us, there are always many new interesting upcoming protocol and research in cryptography consensus, which you guys will hear about um, some aspect of that today, right? Like, and they always call for the need for new new incentives, right? Of course, there's always protocol improvement and governance, and then we also participate very actively downstream in the network analytics and ecosystem. After all, the success of uh, an economy really depends on the success of this ecosystem. So if uh, so that we're hiring across the board from research, engineering the product, if there's no road that suits you, uh, feel free to email us and then we can always carve something out. And then we sort of also pioneer champion this crypto econ process, um, design, validation, deployment, and governance, right? So this is something that we, we kind of like apply this systematically in thinking about new problem and how do we model them? How do we know, uh, how do we design around it? And how do we know our design is good, right? Um, so, and then crypto econ is really interdisciplinary as we can see from this diagram here. And then we are looking for collaborators from like different backgrounds and experience. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, dive right in. So what is uh, Filecoin? So um, there are many definitions of what Filecoin is, and uh, here's, I'm, I'm giving one that from our, our take at Crypto Econ Lab, right? Filecoin is, besides being a storage network, we think of it as like a layer one protocol that starts with data, right? And then it's also a multi-sided marketplace enabled by blockchain, which also makes working uh, in crypto economics on Filecoin so interesting because there's suddenly tremendous scope. It's like a live economy running uh, with like different kinds of marketplaces emerging on this system, right? It's also an island economy, people amassing cloud resources and building new experiences. I want to highlight new experiences. Um, as much as like storage is really cheap and competitive on Filecoin today, right? Like I think for Web3 to win, it's not about cost. It's always about the new experience and new, uh, thinking about new incentive structure, new marketplaces. And that's why it makes it such an interesting place. Um, it's also an Airbnb for cloud services, right? Um, it's kind of like, it's a platform where anyone can become a storage provider or a compute provider or a connectivity provider, which we'd hear uh, more speakers talking about that later today as well. Um, pe um, people kind of like come together on this island, amassing different resources, and then, and then offering this a network of utility to the outside world, right? And it's a really passionate research, engineering, and product community. And I hope, uh, and I hope like you, you, uh, I hope like after today you learn more about our kind of unique opportunity and challenges. You would choose to like work with us. Um, here's a kind of like a um, stakeholder diagram of like different participants on the Filecoin network, right? Storage providers uh, provide uh, reliable and useful storage and get rewarded by the blockchain for it. Uh, we could incentivize other things as well in a decentralized manner, but the other things are much harder to prove. Um, there are many teams in our ecosystem working on like improving the verifiability of these metrics, which you will also hear about later today. But in some setting, like let's say we can't verify completely, can we design like new incentive, a new market structure, reputation, and metrics 
Um, there are other teams that will, they will talk about this today as well, right? And then a uh, client today, they can only store data on Filecoin, but they will soon be able to do a lot more when a uh, user-defined EVM smart contract coming to Filecoin. Um, we also hear uh, different teams talking about that today as well. And developers are here to build new experiences. As I mentioned earlier, it's not about cost, it's about something new, right? And that's what um, this thing, that's what um, all these exciting opportunities come from. And token holders stake Filecoin, which is another big opportunity. And the ecosystem partner create a myriad of initiatives to jumpstart the ecosystem. So um, this is like a comparison uh, in terms of with Filecoin uh, with other storage networks. Uh, as we can see, within the Web3 space, that pretty much is like a dominant player. But however, from our ecosystem perspective, um, it's not about uh, Web3 assets versus them, but more about how can we bring even greater adoption uh, from uh, the traditional web, right? Um, in comparison to AWS, right? Well, I think we are only another 10x to go to catch up to the size of AWS. And also just to call out, right? All this uh, capacity and adoption was only a mass in slightly over a year, which showed this tremendous power of crypto economic incentives. Um, but we are still like, we are still just getting started um, in, our, in our quest to like build greater adoption uh, on a web two scale. And the Filecoin is a layer one. So we implemented a version of EIP 1559 uh, roughly a year before Ethereum mainnet. We, uh, back then we looked into, we had a set of requirement of our gas model and it checked the boxes. Um, so this is like the kind of the network transaction fee on Filecoin since uh, launch. At its peak, as we can see, there's, it's actually consumed more than 200,000 Filecoin in a day. And then there's an interesting dip here, um, which is, uh, which we, um, I think some of us will talk about this as well. And then like, and how do we really design, um, <clears throat> basically the short context here in interest of time is uh, Falcon introduced an upgrade that scaled the network 10 to 25 X uh, at this point in time. But then something, some other things happen such that um, the network ended up consuming less fees, but we believe this is long-term good for the network because that makes it cheaper to participate in the network. And um, this kind of touch in time to something more interesting about um, blockchain gases in a world where scalability is no longer a constraint. One of our researchers will talk about that. How do we think about the new gas model from a crypto econ standpoint uh, when, like, when, when uh, blockchain scalability is no longer a constraint? So uh, with this brief overview of our coins, the layer one, it's a, it's a marketplace, an Airbnb for cloud services. There are many things we can provide beyond just storage. Now we want to talk about a bit more about what makes like um, working on Falcon crypto econ challenging. I think it really boils down to like we try to do some the network uh, Falcon network as a whole, um, or also the protocol network protocol lab network as a whole, envision to build network of utility. Right, we want to make blockchain useful, and then we want to make blockchain internet scale. Right, so instead of like um, the blockchain merely just execute the transaction, there is something the blockchain wants to do. Right? It's, about the, it's about like building an economy. It's about create something of value. About um, kind of like empowering. Um, traditional uh, businesses, right? So, so that's what a lot of our kind of goals and constraint challenges come from. I want to do it in a decentralized, permissionless, and a trustless ways as much as possible. And that's where a lot of our constraints come in. But um, the progress as a, as a community, right? As, a, as a, we have like more than four thousand sort of providers, more than ten thousand developer building our ecosystem. And then uh, we exceeded 16 exabyte of storage capacity uh, with like uh, with more than 70 petabyte of data store, right? And then you have a global community of like storage providers. Um, and uh, and also something that struck me um, during this um, Dev Connect was I think maybe like a year or two ago the crypto econ community was tiny, but I think um, during this time in Amsterdam we actually see multiple projects working on very similar issues uh, within the Web3 ecosystem. And then we hope that uh, throughout our talk today, we get more people excited and interested in working in Web3. So we'll just, I just wanna talk through some of the high level key economic policy that we kind of decide, uh, we picked and some of the consideration that went into it for Filecoin, just to give people a glimpse of some of the uh, trade-off and uh, consideration that have gone into it. So the biggest lever that we have is a block reward policy, right? Like. Um, um, before Filecoin, most of the crypto system kind of adopt some something of a flavor of an exponential decay, where right? it came from the uh, the Bitcoin land, right? We um, the early adopter gets um, gets um, disproportionate reward, and then like it goes down from there. 
uh, we identified a few issues and constraints with this early on, right? Like um, sometimes when you give the most reward at the beginning, the network is the least mature. And it's also the uh, smallest in adoption, right? Like we, we want the network minting to kind of be aligned with the network's utility. So uh, together with our collaborator at Block Science, we innovatively came up with this mechanism called baseline minting, where the block reward is minted based on the network KPI. And then in the case of Filecoin, um, because storage is the only thing that we can prove, we have this exponentially increasing um, baseline, which is a target, a KPI that the network needs to hit in order for the minting to be at its maximum potential. So in, in reality, the network will be minting somewhere in between these two bands. Right, so like uh, we were minting a uh, based on the utility that the participant provide to the network. Um, so this is like, and here's some empirical data. We are like more than one year in. So the network started with below the baseline and it catches up to the baseline uh, in April last year, right? And then we can see like the block reward uh, was kind of just, well, the, the daily, the per EPA reward was low in the beginning and then it slowly climbs up and then now it's following uh, exponential decay based on the initial promise. Um, uh, once the network is cro uh, crossing over the baseline. So the area under this curve, which is this part that's invisible here, right? This this whole section are reward that were not minted because the network was not hitting its KPI. And this, all, all the reward here are being spread across uh, uh, to, to give more sustainable reward in the future. The other important policy is collateral, right? We want to align all the sort of providers incentive with the network. So we want to make sure uh, the storage is reliable, which turns out to be pretty reliable. We want to make sure uh, people uh, are not violating the consensus uh, security of the network. So there's both the initial storage collateral, but there's also the initial consensus uh, pledge, uh, pledge collateral. So uh, this is how, on a high level, how people mine or become participant of storage providers on Filecoin, right? They acquire the token. They kind of like commit, let's say like when you have the supply of storage, but there's no demand for it. You basically uh, put that into a storage container. You call it, we call them committed capacity. You put in some file coin as well, and then you commit to the network and say, hey, we are going to prove this amount of storage on the network, and here's my collateral. And then when demand comes out, comes around, people can then say, oh, let, and I will take out my container, and then I can slot in the demand, I can slot in the deals. This, the analogy here is like empty Uber car driving on the road to demonstrate, hey, we have demand for all this, we have supply for all this capacity, and then when a client comes around, they can flag down a Uber and say, hey, I want to get into the car. Um, so this is made even more true with Snap deals. Now people can just slot in their useful data into the capacity on Filecoin. And then one year in, like we lock, I think more than 120 million Filecoin um, on the network as collateral. If you compare that with like any of the DeFi protocol, you'll be easily ranked as among the top five across all Web3. But this is another aspect that people don't talk so much about Filecoin. And then this is also the percentage of the circulating supply being locked uh, in Filecoin. Again, there's also major opportunities here as well, but I think some other speakers today will speak more about them. And uh, then the other interesting aspect is like slashing policy, right? Uh, this is also pretty interesting. Um, um, so people, before Filecoin launch, people always talk about, oh, how do we guarantee some kind of quality of service on the permissionless network? And then it turns out crypto econ is to the rescue. Um, so on a high level, the Filecoin blockchain will come around to every storage provider and, and ask them, hey, you said you're storing my data, where is it? So the provider will say, hey, here's a proof of me storing it. And then the blockchain will check, okay, good, you have it. If not, oh no, you don't have it. And then you get slashed for not, uh, for not storing the data that you promised to both the clients and the network. So th on the right side, this is the chart of like the daily uh, thoughts on Filecoin. As we can see, the shape of this chart like, highly correlate with the daily thought penalties on the Filecoin network. And then later on, I think there's another talk that talks about um, uh, penalty and how, how incentive is doing a really good job in making sure the Filecoin storage is super reliable. Um, and then there's also gas policy because after all, it's a layer one, right? Like we implemented the IP1559 variant. Um, and then like we, we had like, two other variations here. One is this overestimation we started since Genesis. Uh, basically, the, it has to do with how the VM uh, execute messages. We are not going into details. And then we also introduce a batching dynamic because Filecoin is a very, is, that's my personal take, is one of the most scalable chain out there. Um, sometimes like from the crypto econ land, we sometimes will ask our engineer, hey, can we slow down the scalability so that we let demand catch up to the chain, right? But uh, we introduced this like 10x, 25x improvement in scalability uh, earlier last year, 
And then we also introduce a batching dynamic to kind of like um, to um, to balance out the uh, balance out the incentive uh, misalignment. There's a whole separate talk there that we're not going into, but like, that's something interesting. Some of this um, some of this innovation that we did and modification that we have done to the gas policy. There will be another talk I think uh, by the block science team on gas later today as well. So another challenge with, um, so we talk about on the policy side, but uh, well, unfortunately as like crypto economists, our job is not done. Once the protocol goes live, there's still like um, governance, there's still analytics. So we also develop this like Filecoin improvement protocol in thinking about governance, how do we decide uh, what policy go into the system? Um, so FIP model after EIP, uh, Ethereum improvement protocol, anyone can propose a fit. But then sometimes it's like a, a FIP could be seemingly innocent or it could be universally positive, but then they actually have a very profound crypto econ impact, right? So we also develop a governance process within crypto econ lab, and which is we start from, we first take a look at the, at the idea, we perform a smell test. Does it smell good for the overall economy? And then we, we do an impact surface assessment, right? Like if, um, if it's a very small impact surface, but it's also a very big improvement, then it's no brainer. But then sometimes a big impact also comes with a big impact surface. And then we need to go into a lot more considerations. And then we do analytical analysis, where sometimes we just uh, modeling, writing out the analytical equation, which you will see quite a lot from our colleague today in the, um, in, in the various aspects of the work. And then, uh, and then one step further, sometimes we need to do modeling and simulation as well. The challenge with crypto econ sometimes is there's no right or wrong answer. And then the outcome can also depend on many external uh, factors, as we can see from some of the hyperdrive example. Um, but uh, of course, we also invest a lot in analytics to make sure that whatever policy we pick as a community, we have like uh, real-time feedback on how we are doing and an analytics can also inform uh, where are the most needed areas of the network and how can we improve network governance as a whole. Uh, we'll hear from a uh, starboard team later to talk about how uh, we apply analytics in network governance. Um, there's a dashboard, and then there's also both from the network level, uh, level dashboard and also from the actor level dashboard. Um, then this is also like um, about how people behave and spend in the network. And this is something, uh, another call to action here. Uh, in the traditional web world, people really study data to its bone, right? Like everything is getting analyzed on a traditional web. And in the case of Web3, everything is public, right? Everything is public. Um, but People, uh, but we are not spending nearly the amount of effort trying to understand what's going on and how to how do we use those insights to make better informed decisions and how do we uh, improve the welfare of everyone in the ecosystem. So there'll be more talks on this topic later today as well, but I highly encourage you guys to check it out too. Um, now that we talk about all the challenges within crypto econ and Filecoin, uh, let's also talk about the opportunities. So as I mentioned earlier, Filecoin is one of the most scalable chain out there. Um, even today, Filecoin is the largest deployed uh, snark network in, in the world, right? Like we hear, uh, we hear talks from our cryptography team later today as well, talking about some of the new direction that they are checking out. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, we did this um, 10 to 25x increase in uh, scalability earlier last year, and then they are more up in this up, up in our researchers uh, up in our researchers research team's sleeps. Um, given this kind of increase in scalability and, in, and the, the parallel to the Ethereum world would be like, what happened to Ethereum uh, after all the roll-up solution comes online, right? Like how would, you, how would it impact the macro of Ethereum as a whole, right? So this presents lots of interesting questions from a crypto economic point of view that's not frequently asked. And uh, later today, there will be, a I think right after this talk, there will be a talk on how we're thinking about new gas models in the post scalability world. Another unique value of Filecoin, in my opinion, is really like this verifiability of data and, and, the, and, and you have a proof that data is online every 24 hours, right? So um, in some sense, in my mental model, where right, a CID, a CID, which is a content identifier, which is a unique hash of the content of, um, of a piece of data, right? Like in my mental model, an NFT is nothing more than a unique representation of some digital content, right? You can technically um, create new interactions beyond just trading on NFTs, and then you bring the value back to the content itself, right? So you have this pretty unique building block um, that coming onto Web3, uh, where you have like verifiable content that's being proven every 24 hours. And what are some new interactions that we can build with this? And I think we have another talk today that dedicate uh, towards this as well.
And then this is another <clears throat> interesting building. Uh, this is kind of illustrate what we were talking about earlier. You have this IPFS layer of like um, of a CIDs, which is the hashes of the content. And then you have the Filecoin layer, which bring you the proof and the internet level scalability, right? Um, um, previously, people can try to do bridges to other smart contract platform where you can build a business logic that opens the door to a whole range of business applications. Um, but um, even more, ex even uh, even more, as an even more exciting updates, uh, user defined EVM smart contracts also come into Filecoin, right? So this is what we call FEM project, where now you have smart contract and also like provable storage. So a, a kind of a challenge to the audience is uh, Web3 evolves in waves, right? Every time there is a new building blocks, we always have, we get excited about them, but sometimes we haven't figured out what do we do with them. This is a case of ICO in 2017, and then that gave us with DeFi and uh, CryptoKitties, NFTs. Right? The challenge here is now we have a new unique building block. What are some new experiences can we build? And then we have some other speakers sharing um, their kind of perspective and ideas here as well. And lastly, um, there's, uh, we have massive amounts of data being capacity, massive amount of data being stored. And then how can we, uh, and then now people are also building different retrieval markets on top of that to really retrieve this data um, and then put and, and in, in the context and use cases that they are using, right? So uh, my personal take here, the retrieval is really context dependent as well, it really depends on the use case. On a technological level, nothing that stops you from, that stops data from being retrieved. Um, it's more, it's more so like a business use case, more so like a product market fit kind of question. But the good news is there are many, many teams working on this. And then we also hear another talk today by Patrick talking about uh, retrieval markets on Filecoin. And uh, yeah, lastly, today is Falcon Crypto Econ Day. Today is the day you guys at the right spot. I'm very happy to have all of you here. As I mentioned earlier, where like in uh, maybe just two years ago, there, we, it's very hard to put together a crypto econ event. There aren't that many people in this space. I'm super, super excited. Now we have more and more uh, talent, developer, researchers, mindshare interested in crypto econ. And I hope I have sufficiently convinced you in the context of Falcon, there are so many exciting opportunities and challenges with crypto econ. And with that, thank you for your attention.